Hello YouTube! My name's Tina and I do videos every single week on lifestyle, DIY, beauty, and honestly anything. But right now I'm focusing on my wedding series. So there's a ton of content right now on DIY and just things that I did for my wedding that I want to pass on to other brides out there and I think it'll really, really help you. I have a playlist of all these videos, so I'm just gonna link it down below, but today's video is specifically going to be about addressing envelopes, and this video is not specific to brides or people getting married or sending out wedding invites, because it really does cover kind of the basics of what you need to get started in doing some faux calligraphy for your envelopes. So I go into detail about all the steps that you need to take. I know I recently did another video about how I actually learned how to do calligraphy for my envelopes from start to finish and that was more of an overview so if you want to learn more about the process you can go down to the link below but this video is going to be more in depth and have more steps on how you can actually space it out correctly and get your envelope to look really really nice every single time you do it so if you want to learn how to address envelopes and do it easily keep on watching hello from voiceover Tina before we start the tutorial I just wanted to show off my nails a little and while we're all staying cozy at home I decided to do a little self-care and add stars to my nails and I love how simple they are but that's not the point of this video so to start I'm going to show you guys how to create your own template as a guide for addressing your envelope. I have mentioned previously that you can buy a stencil template on Amazon or Etsy but if you're a beginner and you're only addressing one envelope you can also use this method. To make things easier I'm using a piece of dot grid paper. You can use graph paper or even print out a piece of dot paper. I'll have one linked down below. I'm just gonna rip it out of my pad and then I'm going to mark off the corners of the envelope and this is perfect because it lines up with the dot grid that I'm using and it makes it so much easier for me. And the invites I'm using are five by seven inches. So the envelopes are going to be five and a quarter inch by seven and a quarter inch. So now that I marked off each one of the corners, I'm going to measure the midpoint of the envelope. For mine, it's three and five eighths of an inch, which is super technical. But if you are lazy, you can just fold your envelope in half and measure the midpoint that way. So this midline serves as a spacing guide and will be really handy when you're addressing your envelopes. Make sure you do it to the top and the bottom of the envelope. Next, I'm going to mark off where I want each one of my address lines to go. So give yourself four lines, one for the name and three for the address. I would give myself a little less than half an inch in between each line, but I also found it was really easy going by dots. So here you can see I'm counting down every three dots for each line. So when you're first starting out or you don't have a laser level, use a pencil to lightly line the envelope with your template. And the key word here is lightly because after you're done, you're going to erase the lines. And if you press too hard, you're going to leave an indent in the envelope. And that is not what we want. Another alternative without having to create the lines is just to place on a ruler every single time that you're writing on the envelope. Now I'm going to show you an example of what your envelope should look like. And if you notice here, I'm using a brush pen to write the first and last name in calligraphy. And for this line, you can make it as large, as fancy, as beautiful as you want it in whatever cursive you want to make it. But for the rest, I'm going to write it in a non-script handwriting. And by leaving the address like this, you will save money on postage. And that was huge for me because I did not want to pay the extra amount to have someone actually read the address. When you leave it in a non-script handwriting, the machines at the post office can read it. And that way you don't have to pay for the extra postage for that. I believe it's called a non-machinable postage that you have to pay, but I did not want to do that. So that's why I did it as shown here. I also want to mention that unless the address has an apartment number, you will not need to use all the lines for the address. And remember that midline we created, that's going to give you the perfect place to put the middle number of the zip code on. So that's the number you wanna start the zip code with and then space it evenly out with the other four numbers. And there you have it, a completed envelope. This for reference is what your envelope should look like roughly. And now I'm going to show you what I did for my own wedding envelopes. Did I say envelopes weird? 
envelopes. So for my wedding, I used these misty rose colored envelopes, which gave the paper an extra bit of pearlescence. And I think that that just added a special touch to my envelopes. And then for the writing, I just used a white gel pen. And I think that just adds a nice modern touch. When I was addressing the envelopes, I also used my laser level from Black & Decker. And I got this from Amazon. This thing is a lifesaver. It honestly just makes things so much easier and quicker to do, especially when you have hundreds of envelopes to mail out. And if you're worried about it getting lost in the mail, please write your return address on the back. I just wrote it in all caps on the envelope flap and that way it was easy to get returned to me if it got lost. Another hidden trick I found when doing envelopes is to not lick the glue on the flap and instead use a makeup sponge and water. And now you don't have to taste that nasty glue on there. Okay, and now it's time for the part that really levels up your envelopes and that is going to be the wax seal. Here's the wax seal that I use for my actual wedding invites. For these, I use white wax and a hot glue gun, but since we are only doing one envelope for this tutorial, I thought it'd be fun to bust out my wax seal kit and use the spoon and candle method. I got this kit from Stantitude and they just have some really awesome custom designs for a really reasonable price and the one I got is from an artist called Etty Kim. It features a wreath and mine and Brian's initials and I'll have this design linked down below. Also a little trick here is to place a line and permanent marker where the bottom is so when you press it down it's going to be facing right every single time. Trust me this is crucial because I messed up a bunch of envelopes by putting them on upside down so just put on that little mark and save yourself the hassle. So I'm going to take my wax and cut it off with a butter knife, super fancy technique here, and then I'm just going to plop it into the spoon and put it over a burning candle. This process is really therapeutic and I think it's just so much fun to watch the wax melt. And once it's melted down completely, do your best to create a small circle of wax over the envelope flap and then press your stamp perpendicular to the envelope, making sure that it's going straight down because if you move it around too much, you won't get that perfect embossed look. Now leave it for a few minutes to cool and you can go ahead and just lift off that stamp and there it is, your beautiful wax seal. Look how pretty it is. These are such a special touch to your envelopes and I'm not lying when I say some of my friends actually kept the envelope and didn't even open up the envelope because they didn't want to break the wax seal. So these are just so special and so worth the money when it comes to doing your wedding envelope. So I would highly, highly recommend you trying wax seals. And that is it. That is the finished envelope. Here's a look at the front and the back. I feel like this just looks so nice together. Obviously the back is a little different from my wedding envelopes, but I just wanted to try out that bronze wax and it just looks so good. And that's it. That's the tutorial. I hope you learned a lot from this and here's the outro. All right guys, I hope that you learned a lot from this video and that you could take away some key pointers. Before I close out this video, one thing I wanna mention is if you're doing multiple of these envelopes, make sure that you use a hot glue gun because it would just make your life so much easier and it'll go by so much faster. And I also wanna mention that if you see here, I think you could see in the clip too, but there is a little bit of this black speckle and that is just because of using that spoon technique. So if you do the glue gun technique, you won't get that. But it's also really fun to do the wax seal. It's just a lot more time consuming. And even though this was the most simple approach that you could do with your envelopes, it still is so beautiful and I still love them. I have a couple just to keep for myself and it is really something to cherish. So I hope you guys learned a lot and I hope you try out this method and have a lot of fun with it. And before I let you go, I also want to plug in, what do I want to plug in? Obviously I have to plug in my vlog channel with my husband. I'll have it linked down below and also my Instagram. I'm posting every single day on Instagram. And I want to mention that the description box is going to be the best resource to get all the links. I really try my hardest to get every single link in the description box so you guys can find items easily and resources easily. So if I can find anything else that's really relevant, I will have it all linked down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm just so grateful that I'm able to create these videos and really help people out there. So thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!